It starts with two ideas. Um, I, I had this, this uh, uh, idea for uh, some years that I wanted to do uh, a second stop motion animated film. I'd done one before, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and that I wanted to do one that was dogs. And I had this uh, thought of uh, a group of quote unquote alpha dogs, all alpha dogs, who are named Chief, Duke, Boss, King, all named alpha dog names, and that they were living on a garbage dump. I, I don't really know why that, that was that I thought that was good, but that was my feeling. Um, and I brought this to uh, Jason Schwartzman and Roman Coppola, my old friends, uh, two of my closest friends, and we've worked together before on other stories, and um, told them, and we started talking about it uh, as something to, to write together. And, um, and we quickly brought in the idea, we had, we had talked before about wanting to do something in Japan, and we sort of smashed these two things together. I've spent a bit of time in Japan, um, but more than my own very limited uh, experiences really in Japan um, is Japanese movies. That's really um, that's really the inspiration, and it's it's and it isn't Japanese movies today. It's it's uh, Japanese. It's particularly the 50s and 60s. Really, the two the two greatest inspirations for us. Maybe there's four. There's Akira Kurosawa, there's Miyazaki, there's Kurosawa and Miyazaki, and then there's Hokusai and Hiroshige, the the printmakers, um, and our um, I think our greatest inspirations are those movies and those uh, those pictures. The setting is the city of Megasaki, twenty years in the future. The, the government of, uh, the, of the mayor, Kobay mayor Kobayashi, a corrupt and powerful uh, mayor of the city, um, has launched a campaign to the cat love, his cat-loving Kobayashi dynasty has launched a campaign to exile the dogs of the city. And the dogs have all been sent to this garbage dump trash island. And the story really begins when the mayor's adopted son, his ward, Atari, flies uh, to the island on a small airplane that, he's, that he uh, sort of hijacks. Um, and he um, sets off in search of his bodyguard dog that, that they had assigned him years before. Um, and, um, and the story is really how this, how this group of dogs he meets on the island help him search for his dog. We found this boy, Koyu Rankin, um, and Koyu, he, he, the, the character's 12 mm -hmm. in, in the script. Um, Koyu was actually eight He's, which is much younger than you would ever cast in a live action movie, somebody to play a 12 year old. It's just, it's like, you know, it would be like casting a 20 year old to play a 60 year old almost. Um, uh, the years make such a difference at that age. But um, he had a great, his, he just had a, has a great voice. Um, and um, the, the puppet we ended up designing is, I think, inspired by his performance, really. It's inspired by. Uh, by the way he did the character. And I feel like it affected every step of what we did from the moment we recorded him. He has a pride that, that's not, but it isn't like pride, the, the, it, it, it isn't the sin of pride. You know, it's more, he has, a, he has I guess, self-esteem or something, and, a belief in what he thinks is right and so on. Um, and he has a good moral compass in a place that has lost its moral compass.
It's a certain kind of animation because it's with a with a puppet uh, like these dogs. There are muscles all throughout the face, palates, and these you know there are little um, armature bones that are moving moved around and. It takes a lot of experience to know how to really bring a face to life in that way. The thing I enjoy in particular about working with the actors for a movie like this is you use the rehearsal. I mean, once they say it in any context, you have it. It's, it's not like you, there, there's no set. There's, there, they, nothing has to be technically right except that the microphone, except that somebody had pressed record, basically. And you can use a half a sentence of this. You can use anything anybody says, and we edit it and work with it, and we animate to it, and we use it. Um, so there's such freedom in the way that, uh, in the way that, you're capturing the performances. It's um, particularly suited to stop motion because when you're animating a puppet to something that sounds, it's such a prepared kind of medium, but when a puppet seems to be reacting to something totally spontaneous, even though if you track it back, you realize they had to have this spontaneity a, a long time before they were animating it, but it still kind of somehow stays in there. Um, that that's the that's oddly the thing I like the most about uh, stop motion animate animation performances the spontaneity.